In this video, we are going to be talking about Despair, which stars Dirk Bogard and was directed by Rainer Werner Fassbinder, the great German film and filmmaker. My guest today is Paolo, Paolo Kagoen, who is a film critic and he writes for In the Seats and he's also written for the National Post and the film experience. Uh, and I, he was on my show a couple of months ago and we were discussing yeah. uh, two LGBTQ films. So yeah. Paolo, thanks again for joining me today. Yeah, yeah, thank you for inviting me, yeah. No, anytime, my pleasure. I don't know a lot of people who, who know Fassbinder very well and i've only in the last maybe four years or so started to watch his movies but have you been a fan of his for for a while uh yeah like i i've had like an interesting kind of like story i mean yeah we were talking before and just like we've basically seen the same movies as him but like i guess like i've seen like a few more like but so weird thing is i actually knew about him from vogue because like i think some lady was like this shit was like live blogging like the september issue like the actual so like turn the page what's in it and then basically yeah. by page 400 she gave up and the thing is like no like, i could do better i couldn't but the thing is i think on page 400 or 500 like there was an actual feature about fastbender which makes sense because like every single woman in his movies look great so oh and yeah i saw my <laughs> first fastbender at the, the cine forums or you know seeing seeing it at tiff because like once in a while like tiff would have like a fastbender um yeah my perspective so okay like cool like they're showing these movies let's go see them yeah no absolutely and it's incredible i mean sometimes when i think about how many movies this guy made in like a very short span of time like yeah. 13 14 years uh and he died you know so yeah. young and it's it was very much a live fast die hard oh, yeah yeah. you know kind of life but he made these extraordinary films and i've been meaning to watch this one for a while because i also really like dirk bogard uh, yeah. of course you know we talked about victim uh, a yes. couple of months ago so was this your first viewing of despair or had you seen it before uh this is like i actually just finished watching it a few hours ago and because yeah like i mean it's been a while since i've actually seen yeah i think i saw eight hours don't make a day like Early, either earlier this year or last year so just like i totally forgot how weird he was and it's it's always a different kind of weird and i'm just like oh my god <laughs> yeah. yeah it's not something you could just sit back and you yeah. know unwind to like it, it requires so much attention yeah and it's so so demanding but how yeah. did you feel about how about this film uh yeah no it's just um um uh, my least favorite fast bender but it's still like pretty good like it's like a least favorite fast bidder so like pretty high up there. yeah for but sure yeah, like, it's still like yeah like it's just like um it's also yeah like english like his first english language film i think it's right. our english like fully english language film and but the thing is it's like it's it's as if like nobody knows how to speak english properly and i feel like he's doing that on purpose i feel like dom stoppard who wrote the film also is doing that on purpose because like yeah it's it, it's about a story of like a russian immigrant from like well like a German who immigrated from Russia to Germany and then but you know I guess you know like he, it also discusses like him being a Rothschild which like just just say like he's Jewish like well, like it's like squirting on the it's like the weirdest thing like skirts on the fact that he's Jewish and just well just yeah well it. that's where I got confused too and then you know like he met when he's trying to merge companies because his 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 chocolate company is is yeah. going bankrupt and he says what his mother is her religion and then you see the other guy you know they zoom in and he's clearly like oh i don't like you know it's very much a, a hateful reaction so yeah. i was like oh i didn't know what he what he was saying but then later mm -hmm. on i was like oh he was saying jewish you know yeah. that i'm half jewish but yeah you're right that's where it, it 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 gets confusing i think i would probably i mean i really enjoyed it but i think i would like it even more uh seeing it uh again you know but it's it's such a um it's such a you know i mean it's fassbender so it's so it's so unusual i mean did you find it confusing at all uh you know i like i feel like yeah like it's confusing but i also kind of found an affinity which is because yeah like again like he's an immigrant we all speak english but it's just like watching like or hearing the language like language for a first uh for the first time like yeah it always feels like yeah it felt like i'm hearing english for the first time and it's also like because it's like it's 
English, like the language is English, but the characters are German slash Russian. And of course, like Dirk Bogard is like, she was born speaking English, but just like, just so that he could fit in with everybody else. Like he is like the, like he decided to like, do like a big swing on his character. So like, there's also like that angst of like, you're trying to like express yourself in a language that's not yours, which is like, I've I've been that person. Oh, I've seen a lot of people do I that. So just, like, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, there, yeah, there's all, yeah, there's all, yeah, like it is, this is like an angry, angry movie. That That's a really good observation. When he's talking to that other owner of, that he's trying to merge companies with, and he's talking about that, you know, they, he was he was forced to forge documents in order to, live in Germany and then he talks about he was with one army and then another yeah. army and so he was always playing some kind of part mm, in yeah. order to survive, survive and because yeah. I I mean I, I could see that okay this has something to do with identity and mm -hmm. it has something to do with perhaps suicide or rebirth of wanting to to be someone else Mm -hmm. uh but it you know it gets really strange when <laughs> he 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 meets the man who he is convinced looks exactly like yeah, him. just like in what universe does that like <laughs> yeah the, does that guy look yeah like uh klaus lovich is the yeah the actor's name, but yeah like yeah, felix is the, the yeah felix yeah, yeah it's so well it's so strange because he's telling you right there that that herman who Dirk Bogart is playing is clearly mad or he's going mad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, again, he's he's gone bankrupt. Here we are, 1930s, the rise of, of Nazis and Hitler. Everywhere yeah. you 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 go, everywhere he goes in the movies, in the movie, you see, uh, you know, a poster of Hitler, uh, the, the swats, because he's constantly reminded of. Yeah. And clearly that's making him, you know, afraid because he's already gone through that before. But he's telling you right then and there that he is going mad. Where I read in the book, uh, it's ambiguous right till the end that that he is described in the book as the person he sees actually looks like him. And I believe that Fassbinder was going to. They were thinking of just having Bogart play both parts, which would have made which would have made sense. That because yeah. then you wouldn't have been so sure if if he was going mad or is he just trying to pull off this crime to get to take over someone else's identity yeah. and be able to start again but he's telling you right then and there no he's certainly <laughs> yeah. he's certainly you know insane to think that this guy looks like him that he could kill him for and 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 pass it off as him to get insurance money and then start again i mean it's it's so crazy. I mean, it yeah. was so frustrating for me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how you felt but, about that. Oh yeah, like it, yeah, to me, it's like, it's very social psych in a way. But just like I think, uh, I guess I we are not trained psychiatrists or psychologists here. But yeah, like it's like there's a lot of like trait. Yeah, like as somebody who lived with a neurodivergent person, it's like I could see like his triggers were just like seeing like the chocolate men or whatever. Like it's like, and then that impacting him in a certain way. And, yeah. yeah and there's like little things, and also just like. Was that uh, meant to be? Was that sorry to cut you off? But was that meant to be sort of like uh, the uh, the uh, during the Holocaust, like all the dead bodies? Like is that was that's that's what I thought. I mean, was, yeah, yeah, like, like a premonition like, or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, that's like the exact word. Like, and I guess it's like also like yeah. Hopefully, like I'm gonna say this as um, classily as possible. Like it's not their first rodeo. Like they've they've been pogromed like repeatedly. So just I'm pretty sure you've seen some stuff like. Yeah, during like the communist revolution or something. So yeah. yeah, like, and of course, yeah, Jewish people were probably targeted during the communist revolution in Russia. Right. And that's probably what he remembered. And also, I think like it's it also like the most interesting depiction of Nazism, just because it's like, yeah, again, I, I don't have like a sort of rolodex of like how people depicted Nazis, but just like here, it's like it feels like it's so it's so commonplace but also like people are just like blasé about it we're just like, yeah 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 it's like, well that was an interesting try i imagine he did that intentionally yeah yeah uh because it was becoming so normal yeah. i mean you even there's that one scene that i thought was was really scary when he's at a cafe and he sees the nazis breaking the jewish businesses yeah. their windows and no one reacts even the jewish people there yeah, I no one reacts it's and you think it's becoming normal yeah it's like it, yeah he's the only person seeing this just like yeah. you know, the people who are like like 
who are like I think they they're Hasidic, like they're like Hasidic, they, yeah. they read more Jewish than he does, and just like and like they don't care. Lit, um, Herman and Lydia are talking about how like the Wall Street crashed, and like they think it's like the literal like a literal wall oh, right, a literal yeah. street crashing onto people, which is yeah, yeah like it's like, but but also like that has like ramifications because like most most people are investing in Germany were Americans, and since like the Americans are like broke, like that means like the Germans are double broke. Right. That's so, oh, that, that's right. Yeah, because that was in another that was another unusual conversation, <laughs> and. <laughs> And, and at the same time, you know, he's his wife was like, he was always putting her down off the top yeah. and he didn't seem in love with her. And then there was like the sort of like S&M type relationship because he had like a whip in one scene. And then, you know, her cousin comes and he's jealous of the cousin and then she's sleeping with the cousin. And you just think, what 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 is this? What is this about? I mean, yeah. may, perhaps that was leading to his madness as well. He had a doomed marriage, and now you know the rise of Nazis. He's Jewish, but I think I don't know if if you thought. Um, do you think Fassbinder was suggesting that he was he was also a closeted homosexual? Oh, I I think that's that's the bigger implication, just because obviously, like if you cast Dirk Bogart in a, resp- um, a dysfunctional <laughs> like relationship with his wife, and just like yeah, yeah it's, because he, it's because he's gay, like and. Yeah, like, I think the weirdest thing is, like, when he finds his, uh, when he finds Felix, like, that's, like, when, like, some gears started turning, and just, like, I guess his response to, like, to, you know, what happens and, like, the denouement of the film is because of, like, his desire and because yeah. he, like, he had to, like, sublimate, and like, he didn't sublimate it because sublimating it's a good idea, but, like, he had to take care of that desire in one way or another, and that's the only, well, like, you know, it would have been, he would have been more sane if he ran away with Felix, but well, that's a good. You know what? I hadn't even thought of that. You know, that, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, it, it's it's. I know it's so it's so odd. Like these this choice he was. I mean, I suppose that he was you. He was someone who was always running and always changing his identity. So that was all he could think about. Okay, what am yeah. I gonna do yeah. now? So I can understand that he was perhaps less in touch with his, you know, sexual desires for mm. Felix. I mean, that one scene where Felix is like undressed mm. with him and then he tells him, oh, you may as well just take off all your clothes, you know. Um, mm. yeah, you know, But it, 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 it doesn't really lead anywhere because I, I don't think he really totally had come to terms with yeah. his sexuality at all. I mean, but it was interesting because he was still, you know, he talks to his wife, he's, he's, there's a jealousy when the cousin comes, but then once Felix is involved, and then that other scene where where he yeah. storms in on the cousin and his wife, like totally naked, clearly they were having sex, and he doesn't even react to it. It's like he didn't yeah. care at that point. And it's 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 just so dark. I mean, it yeah. is such a dark story. Exactly. Um, you know, God. Or sorry, yeah. what were you gonna say? No, yeah, because basically, like you know, the yeah, like yeah, speaking of it's dark, uh, dark. Like so, this is like. Tom, like him, like Fassbinder and Tom Stopper doing an adaptation of uh, of Vladimir Nabokov. Yeah, Nabokov, the, the, novel. the novel, which is yeah. like a parody of Crime and Punishment. I can see now why it is a satire. To think, you know, that he would he told that other guy he was getting blackmailed. So then, you know, when he killed his quote unquote twin, that people would think, oh, it must have been the blackmailer who did it. Yeah. Um, but then, of course, that doesn't work because the guy looks nothing like <laughs> the guy looks nothing <laughs> like him. But there's so much uh, black humor. I mean, the end—it's almost like the end of Sunset Boulevard, you know, yeah. where 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 you know, even after Everybody, that, yeah. murder, you know, I was thinking about that this morning, you know, because he's like, oh no, I'm an actor. Uh, uh, wait, you know, don't look into the camera when all the cops are coming. Um, was exactly how Sunset Boulevard ended you're comparing Sunset Boulevard also also kind of makes sense because it's like it does remind it's like a weird the weirdest thing uh, on double indemnity which by the way like I think because old Hollywood is fast in this jam but just yeah. Like, yeah like it's um so he he makes an insurance policy for himself and then kills somebody like which is it, he kills somebody who looks nothing like himself oh uh, yeah it's yeah, double indemnity. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're having to explain the plot. Oh, right, that's right, because it's it's a similar it's a similar 
scenario, but off, but one that was so clear in terms yeah. of you know the why in double indemnity like yeah. okay we're in love i have a husband let's kill my husband and take the insurance money yeah. in this case it's like I i'm going to kill someone who looks like me so i so they think i'm dead and i get the insurance money but this guy looks nothing like him so clearly he's uh, just insane yeah from, from yeah. what i thought like the wife would get the insurance money i guess it's also like well like like my wife doesn't love me anymore here's some money for her well, like we're we're separated, but like instead of doing the normal thing and just just divorce her, for God. yeah, yeah, but yeah, like so he yeah, so there's that, but then like obviously it, we find out that like she actually loves him, right? And she's going insane, and yeah, then, when she gets so upset when she yeah. she well she she thinks that he's dead, yeah, um, and, and of, yeah, sorry, yeah, of course it's like when your when your husband dies and you have like a lot of insurance money, like they're gonna think that you like you did something, like they're like dogging her about everything. And just, oh, like, that's you know, right. Yeah, yeah, they think she knows everything, but like she doesn't. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I mean, she was portrayed as being someone who's, you know, not bright at all. I mean, he yeah. constantly is telling her that she was, you know, basically stupid. Yeah. You know, uh, and he even says how they're perfect together because he, he, you know, in other words, it's like I'm smart and she's dumb, so it's like opposites attract. I think that's yeah. what he was getting at, you know. But he was a complex guy because then he's talking about his mother so badly too, like about how she, you know, here he is running this chocolate factory that he inherited from his father, and then he's he talks about how his mother uh, basically died of diabetes because she was eating all those chocolates. You know, and he was he was being so mean about about uh, the way in which he talked about her. Um, but then later on, he I mean, yeah. you know, people have conflicting feelings about everyone. And then later yeah, on, he was talking more uh, affectionate affectionately about her. Um, there's even that one scene where he thinks his quote unquote twin is coming into his apartment, and he starts to panic. Um, and I, I, I imagine that was because he thought that his plan would would go out the window if his wife saw you know the twin uh, and then it's someone totally you know it's just someone totally different who happens to also be homeless like felix uh but the for the i mean i thought dirk, dirk bogard was just incredible in it i mean he had the like off the top they're this bourgeois couple you know and they're in this great place and and he there he just had this very flamboyant personality yeah. i never seen him do anything like that yeah or you know it was so he's just had like he usually plays someone very tortured you know you look at him and mm -hmm. victim or or the night porter but here he's i mean he's tortured but he's he's tortured in a very different way in a way in which he's in a way in which he's you know losing his losing his mind it's just like you know that breakdown at the end i thought was just when he's arrested is just you know it's incredible yeah, yeah. I guess it's like he. he I guess it, um, his previous characters like are tortured, but it's it's super British in that like let's keep it all inside, let's get it together. That's like that's yeah, I'm right. the adult. Yeah, I'm the adult in the house. Like everybody else is like going going insane their own way. Like I'm gonna get keep it keep it together so that everybody else keeps it together. But like so, but he falls apart. Yeah, and and I think like you're you, yeah. I guess like your comment about like Herman and Lydia. Like I guess like Herman thinking that op it's opposite. It's opposites attract and just like so he doesn't know how to speak the language obviously even though he thinks he does Lydia like he, he makes fun of Lydia for not being able to speak German or, oh, yeah. or whatever the language is but just like yeah but they're both kind of disjointed people like it's like I know that he's whatever he's going through right now that like he could sh he should at least see that there's something like that they should they're like the same in certain ways and like that's yeah. like the tragedy of this is just like no um these are I think it's it's very tragic that like some people can't see what the other person have in common and like they're they're like stuck in themselves and like they're like because yeah I've, I've met people like that who are like super hateful and i'm just like you know like that person yeah like there are people out here who are just like you and just like right. be nice to them like it's it's yeah it's sad it's a good point you know all, all these things makes me just like want to watch it again because i think it's just something that demands uh, more and more viewings because as I said I mean if people watching or listening to this you, you can see how it's it's not easy to even talk about because yeah. it is uh, it's so it's so unusual how did you I, I you know Michael Ballas who was a, a cinematographer of course he went on to work with Scorsese a lot 
Oh. What did you? Oh yeah, he did. That oh, makes sweet. so yeah. much. But actually, like, I'm gonna figure out like which ones, just because it's like, because I think yeah, like my my second fast vendor, it's basically yeah, like Ali Fear Eat Soul. Just like there's something about like the colors and the framing. Yeah. And it's the same thing here. We're just like, it's it's basically like if like because people make fun of Tom Hooper for like his like every like so things are like askew this way or like yeah, it's yeah. or even like Mr. Robot. We're just like I think he pioneered that, but he kind of like did that better or the other something kind of askew with like the way yeah even in, in the framing yeah but it, but at the same time it's also seamless like i, I it, it wasn't until a certain i was sort of i i noticed that the visuals were so breathtaking and then because we're talking about it i i i wanted to pay a little more attention to it so i so i could have something more to say about it and then at a certain point i realized he was moving the camera so much but i could barely tell and scorsese loves yeah. to move the camera but you can't yeah. really tell he's moving it uh it's just so so seamless yeah. there there also like constantly was talking like all of his um doors were made of glass you know and he was constantly mm, talking a- or kissing through with his wife talking through i imagine that's like an antonioni thing where it's like yeah. you know uh, distance, separation, alienation, you know, he's kind of boxed in. Um, did that pop out to you? Like those constant glass yeah. doors or? Uh, I guess like you're talking about like their apartment, right? Yeah. Which, um, yeah. It was more in their like... apartment. Like there, there, there was this element of him constantly being seen. There's even yeah. certain points where, I don't know if it was paranoia, but these, these moments of him just noticing people looking at him i suppose that was feeding into his yeah. his uh madness and like those those parts were quite quite creepy and then you know there, there there's also that scene where he's convinced that 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 he has seen that worker of his at, at yeah. the cinema i mean what did you think that was about uh i yeah like i have i have no words it's just basically it's, like yeah it's like i don't know yeah he was but like, although, I've seen you there. And he's like, no, I never go to the cinema. No, no. I've, and I just, why, what, what is that? I, I, you know, sometimes things just don't, I mean, I don't think he put something like that there for no, no reason. I don't think yeah. he did that for, for a randomness. But I think, again, it's these movies that maybe when I see it again, I'll come up with some kind of an interpretation. But because it's such a difficult movie to watch, I, I, I just couldn't necessarily give enough uh uh give an opinion on everything because yeah. it's so it's so like, challenging or, or maybe it's like he's trying to like look for these people i guess it's like there's this stereotype that like working class like factory workers don't experience art and like if he sees like him like j- like him joking to him about that and he also kind of like brushes it off as a joke too like hey like i'm just like you but like of course yeah like th- oh, there's yeah. There, there's he's like a lot of people he's similar to he doesn't see that but he's also like looking for like kindred spirits yeah that's a good point maybe he was trying to always fit in because i i mean i think that's a big theme in this is is that he he struggled to assimilate you know yeah. in within germany not that it's his yeah. fault necessarily yeah. and, and every and and i think that speaks so much to him not really knowing who he is he's hiding he's got different identities uh, mm-hmm. he's thinking of where he has to run to next. Uh, did you, do you think it had, um, a good, a good enough build in terms of him really feeling the threat of, but killed by the Nazis? Um, you know, be, uh, did, did you think that was very clear for the audience or was it just very very subtle that that's what was going on yeah i feel i don't i guess it's yeah like the, at the same time it's like basically like hindsight 2020 like there's no way anybody could have known but yeah maybe there's like the one percent of people who could have known but just like i like he's probably like feeling some premonitions as you said earlier but it's right it's not like yeah it, it, it there's nothing clear in his head because of course like with a character like him there's nothing clear in his head so just like I yeah, think, like yeah, I think you're right. I think it is more premonition because, I mean, obviously, like I said, I mean, everything is very subtle. Like he's talking about politics with that one guy, and then later on, that guy comes in with like a, you know, a, a Nazi uniform. Yeah. You know, before you know it, and again, like the posters, 
Uh, it was really the only scene where I could see he felt truly threatened by Nazis was, you know, when they're breaking the windows yeah. and he was watching. But I kept thinking, you know, it's not like he ever says to anyone, I'm worried about this, you mm -hmm. know? So, you know, I know some of the criticisms I read was some people felt that there wasn't enough of, uh, of like, the threats, uh, well, not even the threats, but the damage that the Nazis were doing uh, yeah. in the 1930s. But I suppose it is more about premonitions yeah. and what's in yeah. his head. Oh yeah, like I don't, yeah, I, I don't know if I agree with those criticisms just because it's, I mean, obviously, like all, we all know Nazis are bad, but at the same time, it's like there's it, it gets a little exploitative. We're just like if you're gonna see like a bunch of like brown shirts or Nazis just like kicking, like you know, like yeah, one, yeah, yeah like, we've one seen blast. That. Yeah, one storefront is enough. And I guess, I mean, that's there's a, a deliberate point. point of that. We're just like, because, I mean, obviously, like, his 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 co-worker is a Nazi, but at the same time, it's like, they had a previous relationship. And, I mean, I don't know. I think, cause, because right now, like, I'm pretty sure we've all unfriended people just because, like, they wore certain hats or something like that. Like, right. if, I, if, I, if I see a certain hat out there and just like, nope, I do not want to be in the same room as this person. But, like, again, that's because of, like, I know history we're just like then it's just like okay like you're wearing this now okay good for you like yeah right. but at the same time i still know you like we've had like we've had we've had conversations before and you like other than this part of yourself like you don't seem like that bad of a person so like they just brush it off and and talk about an extremely different thing and just and i guess it's like jewish people and nazis were like sharing the same patio and and basically just like yeah one has one, that like, too yeah yeah like coffee yeah. Vodka, two coffees. I'll have a beer and because like oh, it's like the super joke right. about like yeah he has yeah, like, that scene. So the book, as I'm sure you know, is 1934. So this was before yeah. the war even started. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah, Hitler was in charge, but there hadn't, you know, he, they, this is you know before the invasion of, you know, Poland and that. and all that kind of, you know, that you know when it just got worse and worse and worse and worse. So. It's, it's almost a premonition from the author of the book in a way, which makes sense that it wouldn't be like a full blown, um, you know, intense assault of the Nazis yeah. that we've seen in like the pianist or yeah. Schindler's list. Yeah. Like the fact that like, it's like Nazis are like some guy you work with, like it's your friend, like some guy in a bar. Like yeah. that's like, that's scary. Like, that's a good people. point. That's like, a good like, point. These are those kind of movies that for me, I'm like, well, now I, when I watch it again, I'm going to see more. I mean, that's what, to me, what great art does is just that it offers, you know, so much. Um, but I, it, it's, it's, I think it's, you know, some people think it's his best film. I know you were saying off the oh, top, but you think it's yeah, like least... it's, it's my least favorite, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. Like some people find, yeah. Like some people find it messy, but like a, a lot of people who like it really, really like it. Of, of course it's like, the the boring answer, which is the right answer, is that like his best movie is Ali Theory. So right, but right. You know, but you know, yeah, you know, it, I I you know I, I'm still very new with Fastbender. I mean, like I like I said before we started, I've seen, um, you know, a, a decent amount of his features, but it, it I haven't necessarily, uh, with the exception of a couple that we've that I've reviewed on the podcast, uh, I haven't really I don't I haven't really thought about him into into such degree that I would necessarily rank it but um not that you have to do that yeah, but just judging it from this this story I just I just I'd never seen anything like it and uh, mm. I I certainly want to see it again I just think it was a uh, I just thought it was so it was so good I mean it the mm. visuals alone uh yeah. he has that whole Douglas you know he got so interested in Douglas yes. Cirque and you can see that <laughs> mm -hmm. you know you could totally see that uh the the colors and everything um are so douglas Cirque, you mm -hmm. know like um what what why did you think he had those shots earlier like he's making love to his wife and then he's seeing this is himself looking at himself it's like an out of body kind of thing we're just i think like the first the first time that sex scene happens is just basically it's like the sex scene is actually happening. Like he's actually having sex with his wife while like his mind somewhere else. And then like the second time, it's like they can't like he can't even be in the same room as her, even right. though he wants to be in that room. 
So maybe like I'm not giving him enough like benefit of the doubt. Like maybe like Herman, like really does he was trying to like love this woman even though like he can't for reasons we just pointed out earlier. Yeah, yeah. I I, I really like those those moments and it, it, you know it kept happening where he was where he was seeing himself. It, it may have been again like a premonition of the twin of yeah. uh, of you know convincing himself that he has this twin and you know the felix character mm -hmm. but i'm sure when i see it again I'll, I'll i'll see something else in that but yeah a great film this is this is on the criterion channel only until the end of this month august oh. um and they're taking it down on the 31st it just just that one or like are they taking them all because like because i know that like they recycle like are they taking all of his stuff now or no no just this one they're they're, oh, they're taking so down weird. um this film, Despair. I'm sure it will it will come back on. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, uh, certainly well worth it. I mean, it even gets you interested for me to go read the book. But yeah, but Paolo, I'm glad that you could come back and talk about uh, this film because I uh, I had wanted to do see Despair uh, for a while, and I was I'm glad that you're a fast spender fan, and we'll we'll have to very soon do in a year of thirteen moons. Because yeah. uh, if uh, if you want to come back, because I. Uh, that's another film I really, really want to talk about. Yeah. So, so thanks so much. Where, so, where can people find out more, more of your reviews? I said on the in the seats uh, yeah. website. And do you have yeah, another yeah, website? Yeah, because that's yeah, that's. I mean, obviously, you know, just like th that's that's the main place where I right now, and just you know, like I guess like yeah, if yeah, that's that's where I work. That's mostly where I right now. Okay, great. So I'll leave the link in the description box below for people who want to read more of Paolo's film reviews. And for those of you uh, watching on YouTube, if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to my channel. It's absolutely free by pressing the Robert Bellissimo at the movies logo. You'll see it floating above my head right here to your yeah. top left. Just click on that and then click the bell in order to get a notification every time I release a new video or when I go live. And there, this podcast is also in an audio version. Uh, which you can find on uh, Apple and Spotify and Amazon and all the various uh, podcast platforms. So thank you so much, everyone. And I will see you very, very soon. Mm -hmm.